There are three dividend stocks on the top of my list for May of 2023. Two of them may not be much of a surprise to you, but boy, the third one I just came across, and I don't think you're going to want to miss this. Hey guys, Kevin Burgess back again with another video. You know, I spent some time this week focusing on dividends that I believe are a good value. And I want to share with you the three stocks that I came across that are buys for my portfolio. And I wanted to share them with you so that you can consider whether or not they would fit in your portfolio as well. Hey, before we get into this, if you're new to the channel, my name is Kevin Burgess, and this channel is about dividend growth investing. And a little bit about my background, I passed the CPA exam many years ago. Some of the jobs I had in my career were responsible for SEC financial reporting. So I am familiar with 10 Qs and 10 Ks and, and was responsible for actually putting those together. I got my MBA from the Fisher College of Business at THE Ohio State University, Go Bucks, And I finished out my career as Vice President of Risk and Internal Audit. So I know my way around a few financial statements. So I retired at the age of 55. I currently live on passive income. Dividend growth investing and dividend paying stocks are one of the key streams of income for me. So this channel is about building a winning portfolio with dividend paying stocks. And if this is the kind of content that you like, consider subscribing to the channel. I'd love to have you along for the journey. And it would also mean the world to me if you would hit that thumbs up button. What that would do is tell others that the content inside this video is worthwhile to watch and it would mean the world to me. So I would appreciate you giving me a thumbs up. And with all that out of the way, let's get started. So there are three stocks for the month of May that I consider being a buy for my portfolio. And remember, everyone is different. Every portfolio is different. So just because it's a buy for my portfolio does not mean it's one for yours. This video is for education and entertainment purposes only. Hopefully it gives you a good idea of something to research further for your portfolio. But I wanted to share with you these three stocks that I think are a buy right now. Now, the first stock on my list I recently came across, and I want to share it with you today, and it is Raymond James Financial, RJF. I've not heard much about Raymond James Financial, so I did some, some digging into that. Okay, let's look at it in Simply Safe Dividends. Raymond James has a dividend safety score of 99. That is the highest rating you can get in Simply Safe Dividends. The yield is not a, a, not really high. It's about a 1.99, almost 2%, but the dividend growth rate is actually pretty high. And then taking a look at this dividend growth chart, I mean, basically up and to the right, who could ask for anything more than that? And then look at these growth numbers here. The latest was 24% back in December of 22. The last five years, they've grown their dividend on average 18% per year. And over the last 20 years, they've grown it by 14% per year. This has the makings of a really, really nice dividend growth income stock. They've had a dividend growth streak of 10 years and a dividend uh, streak, an uninterrupted dividend streak of 32 years. Let's look at a couple of the metrics here. Their payout ratio is really low, down around 18%. Their earnings per share, other than the blip here uh, during the year of COVID, but their earnings per share is up and to the right. So I invested some time reading through their filings and uh, came up with some bullet points that I want to share with you on this next slide. You can see here that uh, uh, Raymond James Financial, ticker symbol RJF, has a dividend safety score of 99, an earnings payout ratio of 18%. We've already seen that. And they have what would be considered an A-level credit rating with all three of the credit agencies. They're well capitalized. They have an 11.5% leverage ratio, which is probably one of the largest in the industry. They've begun some buybacks because their share price has been depressed lately. Now, Raymond James is kind of a combination between a financial advising company and a bank. They actually own a bank or two. So the interesting thing to me here is those can tend to act like natural hedges when we're in an interest rate environment like we're in right now. So I like the business model of Raymond James. 
they're benefiting from higher interest rates and they have a really strong balance sheet. Their valuation is about 23% discounted. So they are undervalued by about 23% according to Morningstar. But one of the things I like most about this company is that they are long-term thinkers. Let me give you a couple of examples of that. I listened to their earnings call and I've read through some of their documents and they are beginning to hold a lot of cash. And they're doing that so that, you know, in case there's a run on banks and things like that, they are well positioned to cover any kind of deposits that they need to cover. And another example of this long-term thinking is that they don't have, they haven't had many buybacks in the past, but their stock price has been depressed recently and they have begun a buyback program. This is exactly what we want our management teams to do. So this management team is doing the right things for the long term. Doesn't mean in the short term we're going to see any gains, but now is the time, in my opinion, for my portfolio to get into Raymond James so that in the long run, I can take advantage of all of the long-term preparation that they are doing right now. And then obviously there are risks with Raymond James. Some of those are banking and the recession. You can probably come up with others. Business is about managing risk. And I believe this management team is doing a good job with that. So pick number one, Raymond James Financial. Take a look at that. See if it fits in your portfolio. Pick number two is probably not much of a surprise to you, but let me unveil it as... Cummins, Cummins Inc. Cummins has a Simply Safe dividend score of 98. And as many of you know, Cummins is actually the number two position in my portfolio. They have an earnings payout ratio around 33 to 34%. They have an A plus level credit rating. They raised their guidance in 2023. They have a strong balance sheet. They are currently 17% discounted, according to Morningstar. And I also find them to be long-term thinkers. They are investing in battery and hydrogen power for future emissions goals while leveraging their current diesel business to support all of that investment. And the thing many companies are facing as a risk is the looming recession in the future. So that is a risk for them as things slow down. Now, Cummins is down about 10% year to date, which I believe creates a great buying opportunity for this company that is not only doing very well in the current environment, but is also thinking about that long-term environment. So I may pick up some shares of Cummins here very soon. And my third pick for stocks to buy in the month of May, 2023, Johnson & Johnson. Now, Johnson & Johnson has a Simply Safe dividend score of 99. They have an earnings payout ratio somewhere in the mid 40% range. We obviously like for that to be less than, uh, let's say, 60%. So mid 40s is a very comfortable spot. They have a triple A level credit rating. They are one of the two companies in the world to have this level of credit rating. So this next bullet, I believe for my portfolio is a reason to add more Johnson & Johnson. They have made significant progress on the talc liabilities, but the stock market still has them a bit depressed as there is still uncertainty about that. So if you believe that these talc liabilities are very close to settlement, now might be a good time to get in. They have an ultra strong balance sheet. Their valuation per Morningstar is about at fair value. They rarely go below fair value. So if, if you're looking to pick up Johnson & Johnson in the long run, now might be a good time. They have consistent earnings and dividend growth. Let's take a look at their numbers quickly here in Simply Safe Dividends. As you can see, their dividend yield is around 3%. Look at this historical dividend growth. It is just very consistent, very up and to the right. Their latest increase was 5.3%. They average about 6% over the last five years and 9% over the last 20 years. Now, I've heard some people say that, oh, Johnson & Johnson, they're only giving a 5% to 7% discount raise every year. Inflation has been more than that here recently. And I would say that that is a true statement. However, when you look at the longevity and every year consistently, year in and year out, they're raising this dividend at some level higher than 5%. I think in the long run, it's going to beat inflation just with the dividend increases alone, not to mention the growth in the stock value. One other thing to point out here with Johnson & Johnson is their return on invested capital is somewhere in the 20% range. I'd like to see a return on invested capital that is that high. So the three stocks are Raymond James Financial, 
RJF, Cummins Inc., which is CMI, and Johnson & Johnson, ticker symbol JNJ. Take a look at those and see if they would be something that might fit into your portfolio. The main reason I like to put videos like this together is to help build a community of people who are investing in dividend paying stocks. Because I believe if we work together and we learn together, that we can do very well together. Hey, so if you're interested in connecting further, I've set up an Instagram account. I like that because it's really, it's a quicker way to kind of get information out to people. If you're interested in that, I'll put a link below. You can go over and uh, join me on Instagram as well. And also in the comments below, let me know what you think about these three stocks. I'd also love to hear what you are investing in. Now, if you haven't seen my latest video with an important update on the Johnson & Johnson Kenview split, I will put that right here. You can click on this and I will see you there.